Buddy, this is Alan. I'm here to talk to you about the new piece of equipment we have here at the FMC. It is called the Kabuki Transformation Bar. It is a specialty bar for executing the larger movements of squat and hinge. What you'll notice is that it has six different settings from goblet to front squat to safety squat bar to the back squat with a high setting and a low setting and then it also has a hinge setting what you'll also notice is that the weight plate pin here can move up and down by turning and pulling it out and moving it up or down to harder settings or easier settings so at the top as you see it's one two three four easiest and hardest that makes six different movements four different settings for intensity or difficulty, making 24 different variations of what you can do. What makes it more difficult is that as you move away from the center of the bar and away from the center of your body, it increases the difficulty of the movement and enables you to have to engage more of your posterior chain to maintain an upright posture to do the movements properly. Okay. So we're gonna talk about the six different movements that it does. Five of them are squat variations and one of them is a hinge variation. For each of these squat variations, goblet, front squat, safety squat bar, back squat high and back squat low, when you get into position, your job executing the movements is to maintain the angle of the, the yoke pads and the handles in the same spot as you go through the movement in order to get the most benefit out of using the bar and executing the movement uh, the most effectively. I'm going to start with the SSB, the safety squat bar position, and as you can see once it's plate loaded, I have them down at the hardest setting just for demonstration purposes. The weight is pretty much still centered on the bar, even though it's a little bit lower and further away, and the handles are hanging the, in the most neutral position. So this will feel most like a regular squat. To engage the bar, you've got to grab the handles, push through, place the yoke pads across your back, make sure your handles are away from your body, elbows are at your side, and then lift up. Take your squat position, and then your job as you're going through the movement is to maintain the, the same angle of the yoke pads and the handles as you squat, so that the bar stays in the same spot. And then to rack, just walk it into your hip, and then drop. Okay, now we're gonna show you a demonstration of the uh, back squat, but at the uh, low bar position. And what you have to keep in mind when you're doing these different squat variations is what's gonna happen with the bar under normal conditions. When you have these handles on them, the movement of the bar is gonna wanna either fall off your back or push you forward. So for these five squat variations, your job is to maintain this bar, these pads, and the handles in the same spot as you go up and down. Depending on what setting it is, that's either pulling the handles into you to hold that position or pushing them out. If you're at goblet squat, it feels like you have to push them out. When you're at low back squat, I now have to pull them into me to maintain that position. But getting into position holds the same no matter what movement you're doing. You have to swing through first, set the pads in position, establish where your hands need to be, and then step back and execute your squat, maintaining the same positions for the bar, handles, and the pads. And then wrap the same way. Coming in quicker all the time, I can tell. Okay, here we are going to do the uh, back squat um, at the high bar position. What you'll notice right up front is now that the now the handles are kind of swung in front. Everything else remains the same as far as these first five movements. You have to push through, raise the bar, step back, and then maintain that angle uh, on the pads and the handles. So underneath, push through, lift. Get your position, maintain the angles for the pads and the hand position.
rack the same way. Okay, here is the uh, front squat demo. Uh, as you can see, the handles are probably hanging a little bit closer to me, but the cues for setting yourself in position to do the movement are the same. Line yourself up, push through with the handles, get underneath the bar, place the yoke pads on your neck and shoulders, hold your hands away from your body, elbows at your side, come straight up, move back, take your squat position, try to maintain the angle of the yoke pads and your hands, and go through the movements. And then when you're done, in and hit, drop, slide out. Okay, here's the demonstration for the goblet squat. If you can imagine that you're actually holding a goblet to do a goblet squat, you're holding that kettlebell out in front of you. In doing so, that forces you to maintain an upright posture to execute the movement properly. What you see with the transformer bar is that the handles are now swinging into you quite a bit. So as you execute this movement, you have to focus on keeping the bar away from your body so that it sits on the same spot on your back throughout the whole movements. You still push through, position under the bar, come up, step back, get your position, maintain the angle of the yoke pads and your hands as you go through the movement. And then rack the same way, walk in and hit, slide out. Okay, the sixth position, the last position we were going to demonstrate is the hinge. And this is essentially for doing a movement that's known as a good morning. If you've not done them on a regular barbell, well then you're certainly not going to be doing it with this. But to demonstrate the difference between using a regular bar and the safety bar, the transformer bar, I've grabbed a regular Olympic bar taking my position to do good mornings, and this is a hinge. So my hips have to go back and then forward to execute this movement. Using a standard bar, I am holding this barbell in the same spot on my back as I go through this hinge motion, okay? If I switch, to the transformer bar, and I rack it the same way I do everything else, take the bar off, I can feel this is wanting to go flying off the back of me. So I have to hold the handles down rather actively, and then as I push my hips back to hinge, I have to allow my hands to come forward to keep the bar in the same spot. So this is the only movement of the six that you want your arms to be moving through the movement. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about was racking and unracking um, the transformation bar from storage to use. When it's racked in the proper position for use, it's hanging in the SSB position and the handles go straight up and down. To rack it for storage, you have to remove this. And place it on the wall as such. Be aware that these handles are angling away from the wall. People just have to be aware. One last item for the Kabuki transformation bar. In the storage position, the cambers have to be set at SSB. That enables the weight pin plate. Weight pin plate, no. It's the weight plate pin to hang straight up and down. That way when you take it off the wall, to get it in position, you don't have to spin anything around. You can just pick it up off the wall and rack it. It weighs 55 pounds, different than a regular Olympic bar, which is 45. Okay, so that's um, 
a quick tutorial about using the transformation bar. If you have any questions about how to use it or would like some a little bit more personal instruction on it, feel free to contact David Meyer, the uh, director of the fitness facility, or any of the fitness staff or personal trainers, and we'll help you out as best we can.